Hey guys, Dave here. So who doesn't love lychees? They're big and they're cute and they're personable and they'll bite you. Really, they are awesome lizards. So when I was in Wisconsin, I stopped by Pam and Dwayne Nimmer's place. They are two of the nicest people you will ever meet. You'll see them at local shows. You'll see them at Tinley. Dwayne always has his homemade wine that he gives out. It's actually pretty good stuff. So anyway, I went over one afternoon and filmed this lychee episode for you guys here that have all requested a lychee episode. So here's Pam and Dwayne Lychee's Nimmers. Pam and Dwayne Nimmers Lychees on Zilla Presents the Reptile Channel episodes. <music> My name is Dwayne Nimmer, um, a breed rack adacla species. I started doing it about 20 years ago. I turned around and bought a snake when I was gone for military and uh, basically ended up meeting my wife in the process. She ran a reptile room and then from there uh, went from boas and lizards, bearded dragons and stuff like that and back in around 1999 I bought my first uh, crested gecko which we still have and bought that from uh, John's Jungle out of California, and it kind of blossomed from there. Um, ended up picking up some lychees around 2000 from uh, Phil Tremper. Just kept on growing and growing and growing from there. They're just a pretty neat animal, versatile color-wise, and the size of them, the personality, the, the sounds they can make, um, the aggressiveness sometimes that they can be. You know, the different locales, there's a lot you can collect. There's so many of them. Um, they're a neat animal. We turned around and we bought one. We liked how it was, and then we got a pair, and went from one pair to another pair and right now I think we are only missing a handful of different locales. Right now we have around 24 lychees, um, not including babies I don't think either. All locale specific, we don't do any crosses, do our best to try to hunt down the best we can from reputable people that we know that we're going to get at least what they think they are. You know, you can cross anything but sometimes it takes a year or two just to find the right animal for a mate for it. These are bayonese, um, they were our very first lychees we got. The one on my left hand here, my wife kindly named it Yoda. Um, there's a lot of Star Wars geeks out there, I'll appreciate that. Anyways, we got this one back in around 2000 or so. We got it from Kevin Hanley, and Han Kevin Hanley got it from uh, Phil Tremper. Neat looking animal, not a very large lychee, but normally he, uh, he likes barking and squawking at you when you go into the cage, but this time he was halfway decent. And on my right hand side, it's the female from or for that group. These are Mount Colgus. Uh, Phil Tremper got them in 2015. We uh, bought a pair from Phil Tremper and he, he kept a pair, we kept a pair, and then uh, our pair ended up being two boys. So we had to wait for Phil Tremper to produce another one from his pair. So we had a, a newer line. The line came from the UK and the gentleman that he knows over in the UK bought them from Troger directly before he passed away. Whenever I go in the cages, I wear a pair of gloves. Um, this is the female. She's a little bit smaller. She just got paired up here two months ago. The male who was stuck in here is a monster. So it took us a few years to get both groups going when we finally have eggs. They've dropped uh, two sets of eggs so far. Reason why is in tube is a high place. Um, they, leeches we turn around when they're breeding, you wanna have as many uh, areas for them to hide. That way when they're trying, she doesn't wanna be around them or he doesn't wanna be around her, they turn around and they have places to run and hide. Otherwise they can rip each other out. Um, especially the Grand Tray, the main island ones, are, can be pretty aggressive towards one another. And you know, you gotta turn around and off from as many places in the largest enclosure you possibly can. This is the male Mount Colgus. Um, he's a little bit grumpy. I don't wanna get bit by him, so I'm wearing, wearing gloves. As you can tell, uh, he's not a very small animal. As of yesterday, he's 320 grams. We got him as babies, they're about six months old. It took us quite a few years to get the, the pairs going, but you know we tried as, our best to keep uh, the lines as pure as we can. It doesn't always work that way, but everything we have is as pure as we know they can be. These are Moro locale. First animal came from uh, Steve Samelli, and then the other one came from Matt Parks from Pangea. We turned around, we got the female, and it took us about two or three years to find the right male. We bought multiple males from people we knew, raised them up, and then to get the right color. When they're breeding, she'll get a little bit of scars. The male will grab a hold of her, um, gets tore up, but they heal remarkably quick. Last year, she actually had a whole big flap 
that got pulled up in a matter of a couple weeks. It was totally gone. It was remarkable. The colors this one has, you can see the nice reds going through her all the way through. She's a beautiful animal. Right now she's going through a little bit of a shed too. This is supposed to be Yante. Yante don't normally have bars, so it's atypical. Yante usually have spots or be solid. This pair came from Phil Tremper. Uh, he got them from overseas. He's very reputable, he's a very honest guy. Um, if they would have came from somebody I didn't know, I would question it. That's one of the things with the with Lichianis, which I found is you know you it pays to go to somebody that's got a reputation that's good and uh, ask around a little bit. The people that have been doing it for a lot of years, there's a reason why they've been doing it for a lot of years. They've treated people right and they've done the right thing. They try to be as honest as honest you can be. This is another Mount Colgus from the UK that Phil Tremper got in around 2010 or 2011. He's got a pair. I have two pairs. Pretty cool animal. This guy stays pretty dark, almost black. He has very sharp claws. He's digging into me right now. He uses those claws for climbing up trees. This is the female Mount Kogus for that last dark one. Um, she just got put in also this spring with the male. She's also dropped one set of eggs and currently they're fertile. Um, right now she's not dark, but she was darker, I don't know, last time I looked. They change color under during the day. Sometimes they'll be lighter, sometimes they're darker. That male is always really dark. Um, she kind of goes back and forth. I have a bross. This is from uh, Steve Samelli's high pink bross. Um, beautiful animal was born in 2014. They also went together this year. They're not as large as the GTs. Nice looking animals, lots of pink. This is a new Ami. Um, this pair came from Phil Tremper. Um, they're small, smaller uh, lychee, not as big as the GTs. Nice looking animal, lots of color. Uh, produced some nice looking animals. This is a Riviera Blue. This came from Rich Speckler, I believe his name was, out of California. Um, Steve Samelli had them for a while. And then uh, Jim Magnum bought three of them. I ended up with one and I had to wait for Jim Magnum to produce his first female and that's the mate for this one. It's another controversial uh, locale. It's not necessarily, some people don't consider it a locale. Some people do. This is the female. Um, she's very cage aggressive. When I go in there, she'll either lunge at me or try to bite me. And she bit me. Size doesn't matter when it comes to these guys, when it comes to aggression. Sometimes a little female will kick the butt of a big male. It just doesn't matter. Uh, my name's Pam Nimmer, um, and basically as far as feeding um, my lychees, uh, I feed them rapashi, pangea food, and crickets when they are small. When they get larger, I do feed them pinkies. Basically as far as the pangea food and the rapashi food, it's a dry food that you add water to. Um, you make a consistency kind of like tomato soup, sort of. I feed them every about two to three days. I will take a lot of times the Pangea food and I mix it with like a, like fresh mango. Um, we do like a freeze dried fruit and I'll mix it in with that also um, to kind of thicken it and it sort of stretches out the food a little bit more and gives them a little bit of variety. Um, they do sometimes tend to get bored with certain flavors and stuff, so it's good to change up the flavors once in a while. Well, yeah, I use the ones from Zilla and mix it in a little blender. I get one of those little, um, like, smoothie blenders, basically, and I mix it. But I also have a lot of lychees to feed, so it's easier to do it in a blender. The crickets, I will give the small ones, but when they get pretty much to, like, a year old or close to that, they kind of stop eating the crickets and I think it's probably due to like the size because they're so big and the crickets are small and or they lose like you know the taste of it they don't want to eat them anymore. Uh, this is what we use for when we put the pears together the lychees. Um, basically we put a divider in the middle and it's a screen kind of divider so that way they can basically smell and see each other and okay. still kind of be in the same cage but divided so they don't hurt each other. That way they get used to each other and then usually we flop them from each side like we'll take the male put him on her side and take her and put him on her on his side 
that we keep them together, like you know, or keep doing that for I'd say at least about a good month or so. And then we basically introduce them into a, a cage, a different cage together themselves. But it's more so that they kind of get used to each other that yeah it's basically what we use all the time just to put our lychees together. Incubation time is about three months um, and then it's around the temperature of 80 81 degrees. Um, I date them when they lay them. If you do room temperature and just not an incubator it can take about five to six months at the max for the eggs to hatch. Uh, these are GTB eggs um, and basically a lot of times when they're growing They'll keep expanding inside and the shell will actually start splitting so you can see like the lines and stuff here yeah and it's the layers like in the shell so which is kind of cool i've seen them where it stretches so big and you can like see inside almost like transparent but they'll these guys will hatch pretty soon i mean pretty much when you see at this point is when there's matter of a week or so that they're going to hatch out. If you want um, a chance of more females, um, then incubate at room temperature. If you want a more chance to get males, then incubate them in incubator for around 80 to 81. Um, then it increases your odds of getting the sex that you want for them. I think the future is going to be in the, the purity ones. There's everybody can cross them, but every time you cross them, you basically eliminated that line. If you keep everything as pure as you possibly can, you know, you're you're basically in a field of your own. There isn't as many of them. Uh, you know, the people go for colors. That's another another line too, but you're not always going to get a colorful animal. So that line is going to be 50-50. You might get a really nice one this time, and the next time is going to be a muddy one, and not as many people want it. And out of the different locales, um, there's a GTs. The GTs are named after the different mountain ranges out of uh, New Caledonia. New Caledonia is an island off of Australia. Yante is a mountain range off of New Caledonia, Mount Kogus. Um, then all the other ones, they're the island ones. They're named after all the islands that surround New Caledonia, like uh, Bross, uh, Bayos, Moros, Isle C, um, Isle D. They also transverse to the uh, Moro and Bayonese, which is the name of the island.